Hello, everybody. Welcome to Live at Five. It is, I'm going to look and see. It's Thursday, May 10th. I'm Beth Stevens. I'm Paul Montorek. And we are here with the royal one, Eric King. Oh, thank you so much. Hi, everyone. And a fantastic guest. A really fantastic I've guest. I've had chop, chop to the top of my head ever since I saw her. Yes. Lily Cooper is here from SpongeBob SquarePants. Yes. Yes, but first. We love this show. We love this show. We love her. But first, our top five. Okay, you guys, it's the battle of the Bernstein biopics. This is ridiculous. Do you, Beth, I know you remember. Remember there was like an obscure jazz age poem called The Wild Party oh. that nobody knew. And then all of a sudden somebody's like, I'm going to write a musical of it. And somebody else was like, I'm going to write one too. And then the suddenly same. we had two musicals based on an obscure Time. poem. Well, no one ever thought to make a movie about Leonard Bernstein's life, as far as I know. It's but now Bernstein, everyone's making guys. One. Isn't it Bernstein? I just want to say. Bernstein. I'm just saying. Anyway, um, so this is interesting. So we just announced that Jake Gyllenhaal is going to be in this movie called The American. Right. And so now Bradley Cooper will no relation to Lily direct Cooper. and star in a movie about him. Uh, why are you shaking your finger? Because no relation. <laughs> oh, oh. I didn't mean to distract you. <laughs> but, but here's the interesting thing. Yes. He's a very interesting person, first well, of all. No, but the other interesting thing is Broadway.com won his choice award winner, right? Two time. Bradley the first Cooper. award Bradley Cooper ever won was Broadway.com he award. He excited. said that on Entertainment Tonight once. Yes. Um, anyway, his Stars Born movie, everyone is saying, is amazing. Oh, That he that's made with Lady news. Gaga. People are already like buzzing about it. So he's kind of going to be a really hot director guy now, and he wants to do this next. So, so I think that there's enough room in this world to okay. have two biopics. All it's right. okay. We'll get different angles on him. Or biopics, as my friend Linda says. It's as pronounced biopic. Hi, Linda. I know you're watching. It's not medical. Yeah, excited for both of them. Um, <laughs> Wicked is getting a wonderful new cast member. Wicked! Eric is really good with the one-liners. He is. Yeah. It's wonderful. Thank you, Eric. We're getting a new wizard, Kevin Chamberlain, who's a wonderful guy and yep. has three Tony nominations. Yeah, he's fantastic. And he gave a great statement about the first Broadway show he ever saw was at the Gershwin. So no, it was not Wicked. I thought you were going to say no. it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, he predates Wicked. It was actually called the Eurus Theater. Yes, it was. I learned that from reading his statement. That's where I saw Annie. Oh, mm -hmm. well, it wasn't Annie. It was Sweeney Todd that he saw. Anyway, he's excited. So uh, Kevin Chamberlain steps into the role on May 22nd. Fred Applegate, who's been playing the role for a while, uh, plays his final performance on May 20th. We have initial casting for The Ferryman, which is coming to Broadway. This is a fancy British show. Jez Butterworth wrote it. I love Jez Butterworth. It won the Olivier, right? It's directed by Sam Mendes. Very, very fancy. Uh, Laura Donnelly will reprise her Olivier-winning performance as Caitlin Carney, whoever that is. I don't know much about the story. It's Ireland. People People in Ireland. Missing. Uh, and missing. they announced the whole cast, or almost the whole cast. But uh, Patty Considine and Genevieve O'Reilly will names. be in it and then um, a lot of other people and it's, it sounds like it's a, the cast from London right yeah it does sound like yeah. a lot of they people they announced a, a lot of people yes. including Fra Fee it's a great name and I wonder if it's pronounced that way but we'll uh, find out in the fall Fra Fee I don't know <laughs> anyway it's coming in October October 2nd at the Jacobs Theatre opening October 21st I'm excited for it love it Broadway's To Kill a Mockingbird is back on track Okay, let's catch everyone up. In case you weren't paying attention, like in the New York Times, <laughs> to uh, the Mockingbird kerfuffle, that's not the official term, uh, Aaron Sorkin is writing the script for this adaptation of Harper Lee's very famous and wonderful novel that everyone read in school. And the Harper Lee estate had a little problem with some of things, but they worked it out. They struck a deal. So now we have, it's, it's on, it's on. Okay. Scott Rudin's producing. Aaron Sorkin, as I said, has written it, directed by Bart Chair, starring Jeff Daniels as... Atticus Finch. Uh, previews begin on November 1st at the Schubert Theater. Just saying. Opening night is set for December 13th, 2018. Is that exciting? Are you excited? But now we, it's all about the fall now. It's like we're not even done with the Tonys yet. But now we just all move. This is what we do as an industry. We immediately we move do. on. It's like this just is what we keep we do. moving forward. And moving forward. Can we just breathe for like a week. Oh, okay. We can <laughs> breathe in the summer. <laughs> but I'm excited. I really, that is going to be a great a really show. good team. Okay, I'm just She's breathing. breathing. Okay. I got it. Oh, thank He's you. breathing. We have a new show person on Show People. I really like your little intro. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> He's so stylish. <laughs> Hire me. Show, uh, show per who's your show person? Andrew Garfield, y'all. Oh, you really talk to all the Who big is fantastic in Angels in America. So good. And I was nervous to interview him because... He's a big Hollywood star, and yeah. a lot of times Hollywood stars don't necessarily want to sit down and do like an in-depth 
interview no, about their life. they have their responses that they want to Yeah, get. they kind of just want to talk about the project. And But he's so open. Yeah. He's very emotional in the way he talks about uh, Prior Walter and Tony Kushner. And, and he's play. so articulate about it. He yeah. really talks about it in a layered and smart, way. And smart. And his father. The stories about I his father are very emotional. Anyway, this. it's just, I had a really great time. And Miss Vanjie, he's a Drag Race <laughs> fan. And Andrew Garfield so is a Drag he, Race Miss Vanjie, if you watch, you have to say it three times, Miss mm -hmm. Vanjie. Thank you, it's been If you watch now. Drag Race, you know what that means, <laughs> and it's a big thing. And so there's a clip out there now of him talking about Miss Vanjie, and it's going viral. So, so uh, we're excited but, about But that. watch the interview. It's not just about Miss Vanjie. It's not just about drag queens. It's actually a really emotional, It's about great a lot of things, but there's a, a cute moment Yeah, it. it's fantastic. I loved it. On that note, Paul, it's I'm been go wonderful out hanging out with the top you. And get out. Get out of here because Lily Cooper is about to be come and sit in this chair. Eric, can you tell us a little bit about Miss Cooper? I'd love to. Lily Cooper made her Broadway debut as Martha in Spring Awakening back in 2006 while she was still attending LaGuardia Arts High School. After graduating from Vassar College, she toured as Alphaba in Wicked, later going on to play the role on Broadway. Cooper has also been seen regionally and in off-Broadway shows like Sundown, Yellow Moon, Great Common at ART, and The Three Penny Opera. Now she's chopping to the top as Sandy Cheeks in SpongeBob SquarePants the Musical, and that's what we're talk ta talking about today. Leave your questions for Lily in the comments below, and we'll get to as many as we can. Now here's Beth and Lily. Thank you, Eric. Hello. Hi. I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy to be here. <sighs> Thanks for having me. Of course. OK, I know everybody has tons and tons of questions for you. Mm -hmm. We'll get to them. OK. But I get to go first. <gasps> Just calm down. Yeah. That's the most important question first. What's that? How's Dublin? Oh, Dublin is so good. Dublin is so good. Dublin is Lily's dog. If you watched. If you don't know already. If you didn't watch Lily's vlog on Broadway.com, what to are it. you thinking? You've got to get, what was it? Getting cheeky. Getting cheeky. Yeah. <laughs> and like we, we always would say Dublin's name. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was a very important character in the vlog. He gets fan art now. Really? Yeah. I have a whole wall in my dressing room dedicated to fan art and I've had to move on to a next wall. So it's like squirrels and dogs? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love mammals. <laughs> Mammals are great. Mammals no, are great. How is how are things at SpongeBob now that all you guys have gotten so much recognition, yeah. such well deserved recognition yeah. from the Tonys and from the Broadway.com Audience Choice Award nomination? Yes, very important. Two time nominee. I'm sitting next to you. Thank right you. Now. I feel very honored. Um, it's been pretty wild. It's been a wild ride. I mean, after we got uh, eleven nominations. 11 or 12? 12. 12 nominations. Wow. I say 12. 12 nominations. Yes, we got 12. 11 Drama Desks nominations. Oh, Sorry. That's, another, that's more. <laughs> we got nominations. 12 Tony nominations. <laughs> and it's just been, it's been so wild. We're so proud of each other. And it, it's pretty awesome that basically every person involved is, is, has been represented and has been, you know, recognized for their, for their work yeah. from the creative team to the actors. And uh, so it's, it's pretty magical. And it is a show that I think a lot of people kind of, went in with a little edge. Like, yeah, I, think I don't like, know if this is going to be good. We got some side eye for sure. A little People side eye, were like, that's a good way of putting SpongeBob, it. I don't know about that. And I think it's been, it's been a journey of sort of trying to, you know, convince people like, it's more than you think. It's so deep. And I think we've finally gotten to the point where we're like, gotcha. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Told you so. And there's so many people making their Broadway debuts in this show. Yes, so it's, many. It's a young I cast. mean, including Ethan Slater. Yeah, of course. Who uh, Ethan it's and I Spons went to Bob college himself. together. We both went to Vassar, mm -hmm. and we did a play together um, at Vassar, and then we did a Fringe show together. So we've known each other forever. So I'm I'm just so proud of him, and he is remarkable in the show. And he's the toast of the town. He is. He absolutely is. Up bikini bottom too. And mm -hmm. I love how strong your character is. Thank you. Do you feel like? I mean, absolutely. she is like the most. I don't know. She's just confident and assertive. Yeah, I like to think of Sandy as a feminist icon. Oh, she, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> she is a scientist, karate kicking squirrel. Exactly. She has. I a really lot of, would like her to run for office. I think. I think so too. Maybe <laughs> she should get political. She has a lot of mansplaining happening around her. True. You know, and but she really knows how to make her opinion known, and I think that it's it's so valuable. Uh, it's a very valuable lesson in today's world. And, you know, I have little girls and boys come up to me at the stage door after the show and, and just talk about how inspired they feel and how, you know, they think of they think of Sandy when they take a science test at school. Oh, and I just awesome. think that's so cool. Yeah. That's a good thing to have in your head. Yeah. I'll keep you moving forward. Exactly. Now, you grew up in a talented family. I did. Yeah, they're all right. They're okay. They'll do, <laughs> in a pinch. Uh, I just saw your dad last night in Me and My Girl. Yeah. Oh, Chuck I'm so Cooper, bummed Tony I couldn't see Chuck it. Cooper. Yeah. So when you were growing up, did you visit 
him backstage. Like, what was your Broadway experience? You know, people ask me what my first Broadway show is, and I actually don't remember because I you were just back I was there. just like backstage all the time. I love this story about when my dad was in the life, which was in 96, 97, so I was six and seven years old. It's inappropriate for children. Very and inappropriate. I mean, it is literally about prostitutes, prostitutes and, and pimps. And pimps. Yeah. Uh, my dad won a Tony Award for playing a pimp. Uh, but it's an amazing <laughs> role, but go on. And I would come to the theater after school and I would just nap under his table <laughs> and I would like go down to the women's dressing room uh, and the not many clothes there, Excuse like me. not a lot of clothes, Prostitute but pimps, they yeah. were awesome and they and they loved like having a young artist. To li- like I, I was very shy when I was a kid, but I but I I think I always knew that I wanted to be a performer. And the the hookers in the show <laughs> would like teach me how to to like do fake stage combat and teach me how to like hit my oh. head against the wall. <laughs> wow! <laughs> when I was like seven years this old, is quite an education. Yeah. So <laughs> so yeah, I was really immersed in the theater world so this at a is young how you age. Hit your head against the wall. You <laughs> this. Exactly. Did you like then go to elementary school and try that like, out? Be like, look, <laughs> this is what I learned yesterday. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take some of your questions because I know you have a lot. So yeah. Eric, help okay. us out here. So we know you guys get a lot of great gifts, obviously from fans. Uh, what's what's one of your favorites? One of my absolute favorite gifts that I got was from a dear friend named Courtney. Hi, Courtney. I hope you're watching. She has made these really cool keychains, and one of them is of my dog Dublin, and it's a really cute little mm-hmm. clay keychain of Dublin, and I just love him so much. So I, I love that I get to have like a little pocket version of him with me at all times because I wish I could carry him oh, around with me at all times. Does he get to come backstage? He has a few I'm times. Not supposed to, but yeah, it's I'm okay. not sure if it's allowed, <laughs> but he has, and he goes to the stage door, and he's a big hit at the stage door. How long have you had him? I've had him for about two years, but he is seven years old. I oh, I adopted you him. Rescued him. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. I More questions from you guys. Um, Alexa would like to know. Sorry, that last question was from Lori. Alexa would like to know, um, what's your favorite song to hear? What's your favorite song to listen to in SpongeBob? Good question. My favorite song to hear and to sort of experience in the show is definitely Super Sea Star Savior. Uh, it is this amazing gospel number, and Ethan and I are on stage during the number but we're not in the number so we get Mm -hmm. to sort of like watch as it happens and we climb this ladder and and we're sort of looking down on the entire ensemble and Danny Skinner rocking it out with these tambourines and it's (laughs) just so fun the music is so good and it's really awesome to sort of have this bird's eye view of the whole show because you never really get to like sit out and watch your own show so it's that's one of my favorite moments and favorite songs there's so much surreal stuff in this show. Oh, yeah. Because the design, which is David Zinn, did the costumes and the sets. Mm-hmm. It just, it's so much stuff. I feel it like is. you could discover something new every single Absolutely. day. So tell me we some of your favorite did. like secrets of it. During during tech rehearsal, a new thing would always like show up. <laughs> You'd notice e- something out new. in the house. We're like, oh, there's a shark today. <laughs> or, oh, there's a pineapple chandelier. You know, so we have these all, all these amazing cool things just like popping up in the theater. And David Zinn was just sort of like adding cool things every day. Um... I think one of my favorite parts of the uh, set is that it it really moves past the proscenium of the stage and it engulfs the audience. Yeah. And so we are all in Bikini Bottom absolutely. together. You walk into the Palace Theater and you feel like you are in You're Bikini under Bottom. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And we have this big, gigantic fish lure hanging from the ceiling, <laughs> and that's one of my favorite things. Because really, only like the the mezzanine and the balcony really can see it because it's in their point of view. You really have to look up if you're in the orchestra. So I love that there are little gems in the theater that are just for specific people. So we're going to get back to these questions, but I know someone's going to ask. So I'll just ask. Tell us one of your favorite Wicked memories. Ooh! Okay. One of my favorite and wildest Wicked memories is I went on in the middle of the show. Oh, that doesn't happen that often. It doesn't happen that often. And it was pretty wild. So As Alphaba? As Alphaba. So you had to get green at It was a tag team situation. Just, oh. No, it was literally oh middle of act one. So um, Where you were, you were actress, not greenified before this moment. I was moment. not greenified before this moment. I was sitting backstage probably like doing a puzzle. I hear the stage manager <laughs> announcement over the intercom saying, Lily Cooper, please report to the alphabet dressing room. So I run downstairs. They slap green makeup on me. And I, when I say slap green makeup on me, I literally mean with like a paintbrush. <laughs> and it took like six minutes or so. Wow. 
And how long does it usually take? Like 20? Like 25, yeah. 30 minutes. Six minutes. Slap, Six slap. minutes. Slaps a slap. Like, you're not looking pretty. <laughs> but, like, you're green, so that's all Good that really matters. Good enough. And I get my costume on, and I'm in the wings, and I see the actress on stage, and she was ill, you know? So she was, like, really grateful that somebody could come and replace her because she needed, needed to help. leave the stage. She needed relief. So we see each other on stage. She's about to leave. We high five. I walk on in the next scene, and I'm just, like, in the show. And, like, of course, the first few rows are, like, who is this? this <laughs> is there another green person? Height. Yes. But <laughs> the, for the rest of the people? audience, they're like, "We, yeah, whatever, she's green, so it's the same person. So, <laughs> so I, that was like one of the most surreal, wild experiences I've ever had. And you just walked in and said the line. I literally just walked on stage and I was in the show halfway through act one. It was wild. And then they have to wild. make the announcement after intermission. They have to let them know. Yeah. The people know. Wow. So the first, the people My in the first adrenaline view. just went up just listening to I that know, story. I know, it was, was that on, was, was on Broadway or on It was on, on Broadway, okay. yeah. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. um, Joanne would like to know, uh, what was it like doing Spring Awakening at such a young age and of course with a cast who's all young actors yeah. like you? It was amazing. I think it was. You were in um, high school. I was in high school. It was an incredibly formative time in my life. <laughs> I stay in touch with practically everybody that I did the show with, um, because we really grew up together. Yeah. I mean, I was 15 to 17 when I did it off Broadway to Broadway, and you know, I did my SATs during that time, and I went to prom during that time, and I, I applied to colleges. You got a serious education. Right, I know. <laughs> so it was like I was fully immersed in this adult professional world, but also being in this, you know, in a high school world at the same time. So it felt like this strange sort of dichotomy. But um, but it was amazing, and I wouldn't exchange it for anything. It was it was some of the... You wrote an essay for us about it. About I that did. experience. It's a really long time ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think We've that's known still Lily on the since internet. way back. When. Mm -hmm. We go way back. We go way back. Yeah. That was amazing that you did yeah, that. I know. It was pretty crazy. One of the craziest stories is I was taking my ACT one Saturday morning, and on Saturdays we have two shows. So I you was, test. the test was like running late. And so I was, took a cab from my test to the stage door, and I was doing my braids in the cab because oh I was God. running so late. And so I had to go from taking No green this. makeup in Spring Awakening, <laughs> no, though. No. <laughs> um, I had from doing my college test to doing a Broadway show. You must it's be very good crazy. at com compartmentalizing. I think so, yeah. I, I always thought you were a badass, but just talking to you today, <laughs> yeah. It's certified now. Thanks. <laughs> High achieving from a young age. High um, achieving. So, oh, wait, wait, which one was it? Okay. Shamika would like to know, what show would you love to do with your dad? Uh, <gasps> any show. That's such a good question. Yeah. Whatever it is, I'm buying tickets. Yeah. Yeah, we're in. You know, I actually had the idea of doing this with my dad and my brother, Eddie, um, uh, doing Ain't Misbehaving. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Right? Because yeah. Eddie has a beautiful voice. Eddie does have a beautiful voice. He's an amazing actor and has a gorgeous voice. Yeah. And right. we, do, we do concerts together sometimes, I'm, so I'm, I'm I think, there. I feel I'm like that would be, right? I think everyone would sign up. I know. I the Cooper yeah. Family Presents. That would be a, a you dream all show. Work to, like, did you do you sing together at home when you were a kid? Did that sort no, of thing happen? No, you know, happen? I didn't really start performing until high school. So, so you knew was you very, wanted to I knew I wanted to be a performer. I was a dancer, mm -hmm. but I never really sang before, before high school. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a very theatrical family. Like we went to go see Broadway shows all the time, and yeah. uh, we definitely sang in the house a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can uh, imagine. So you were a fan of the show beforehand, right? SpongeBob. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You watched it when you were like growing I totally up and everything. Did. I did. Okay, so Elnor would like to know what's your favorite SpongeBob reference from the TV show Ooh. that's made its way into the musical. Yeah. Like question. it could be an obscure reference that or whatever. That is a great there question. There are so many. If you're really a fan, you really yeah. can only yeah. only real fans will know. There are lots <laughs> of really good Easter eggs. There's a there's a my leg <laughs> in the show, <laughs> yeah. but it's like really sort of hidden and hard to hear. Uh, so keep an ear out for that when you come to see the show. Um, there are also some really great one-liners that Patrick says, but I don't want to give them up because they're all really good. So yeah. a lot of like fun one-liners that are that the diehard fans definitely would recognize. When you were growing up and you went to see Broadway shows, did you stage door? I did didn't. No. But now that you see fans do that, how do you feel about that? I love it. I love to be able to have like that direct contact with them. I think it's awesome. And something that's totally changed the world of, of fandom and of, of stage dooring is social media. It's yeah. unbelievable how the, the really direct access we have to fans. And I think it's pretty cool because 
when I was doing Spring Awakening, I never fan art wasn't really a thing. Hmm. I mean, I don't know if, if it was, and we just never had access to it, but the fact that we have so much access to the amazing artwork that our fans make is so awesome. I think awesome. this show in particular would inspire people yeah, to do that. Yeah, totally, totally. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, back in 2006, they'd have to like attach the fan art to a pigeon. Right. Exactly. Like, Stop, Eric. A don't pigeon. do that to Eric, Eric, you know. Yeah, we didn't, have cell, we didn't have internet yeah, back I then. Know. No, it's there were no crazy. wheels. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> All right, we're going to take one more question from the readers, the viewers, and then okay, wait, get out of here. I wanted to know about you have something. Yeah, learning karate. <gasps> oh yeah, yeah. Karate. Karate. Like karate, as Sandy likes to call it. <laughs> I took some karate lessons before rehearsal started. <laughs> yeah, that's um, awesome. It was so cool. And then I have to shout out to my brother Eddie because it was his idea to bring nunchucks into the show. <laughs> he was like, really, like, why don't you just bring nunchucks to your karate lesson? And I was like. Yeah, that's actually a great <laughs> idea. So I asked my instructor, and he was like, "There's a store down the street where you could buy like foam right, nunchucks so to so practice with. You don't hurt with. yourself because so right. it's very dangerous." <laughs> he had like a hardcore like wooden set with a chain, oh, yeah. and I tried it once, and I was like, "No, thank you." Yeah, I like my teeth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I got this foam pair, and I brought them home, and I practiced with them a bunch, and I watched a bunch of kung fu movies and videos and <laughs> clips and stuff. And you were like, it's research. I have yeah, to do it. I have to do it for my job. <laughs> but that was the great uh, thing about this the setting of our rehearsal of Tina Landa and Chris Catelli. They were all like, bring anything you want to the table. Oh, that's great. You know, Very just like bring, with I bring ideas and don't be afraid to have a silly idea. The sillier, the better, really. Don't be afraid to bring nunchucks. To don't be afraid to <laughs> bring Whatever. nunchucks to your rehearsal. Like, come on, it's the coolest <laughs> job ever. Yeah. That's awesome. OK, we're, we're, we have to get our last question yeah, from our viewer. Yeah, we have one more question. Okay, so Lori would like to know what's the what's like one thing you've learned from SpongeBob? What's one thing you you take away from? What's this your musical? takeaway? My takeaway from SpongeBob. There's so much to take away from SpongeBob. Yeah. There's so many amazing themes and and values, and um, the people that I've met. I'd I'd say the biggest thing that I've taken away from it is lifelong friendships. People oh, yeah. that I. I truly consider to be part of my family, and um, they've changed my life in so many ways, and have exposed me to you know different cultures and 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 types of people, and and it's so the the people definitely. I just I it's love. I feel very grateful. Yeah. So good. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming in. Oh, it's my pleasure. We love having, having you. Come me. back anytime. Okay. You guys go see SpongeBob at yeah. the Palace Theater, but. We're going to go. Eric, take us out. <laughs> Look at him take like us out. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. You can watch Live at 5 every single weekday, live at 5 p.m. here on Broadway.com's Facebook page. And if you're a fan of podcasts, we also put this show out as a podcast. So subscribe to that wherever you get your podcasts. You can tune in tomorrow when we have Beth Malone from Angels in America here. All right. Bye, everyone.